Hey guys, Josh here and I'm going to hopefully help all of you on your way to successfully breeding 5 RV Pokemon in, e in X and Y. Please bear in mind that I do not have a capture card, so this is the best I can offer to explain these methods. Thankfully I've managed to get a few screenshots of important points from lucky individuals who do happen to own capture cards for their 3DS. I'm also going to be going under the assumption that you somewhat understand breeding mechanics, like using an Everstone to guarantee the transfer of, of a nature. So Pokemon X and Y brought about a huge change to the old method of breeding, and that is the Destiny Knot. The Destiny Knot is an amazing item that allows you to guarantee that 5 RVs will be passed down between the two parents. What this means is that out of the possible 12 RVs between the two parents, it will select 5 of them at random and give them to the child. Here is a visual example. Say I have a Ditto. This Ditto has relatively good stats, 31 HP and 31 special defense. I also have a Gabout with relatively good stats, 31 attack and 31 speed. You then attach the Destiny Knot on any of the parents before putting them in the daycare. When the baby is produced, the Destiny Knot will pick 5 RVs at completely random from between the two parents. In this example, it's taking the HP and defense from the Ditto and the attack, special defense and speed from the Gabout. This will produce a Gibble that has inherited those stats from the two parents. And since the Destiny Knot only takes 5 RVs, the baby gibble random at special attack stat, which will from now on be represented as an X in my future examples. So if there is ever an X used for one of the stats, this means that the stat has been randomed. So where can you get this amazing Destiny Knot, you ask? Well, the Destiny Knot can be found in Sarledge City. You head towards the Sarledge Hotel, and on the second floor, the maid working there will give you a Destiny Knot. Thanks must go to Kazo War for the screenshot showing the map location of Sarledge City, and Jay Wits for picking up the Destiny Knot in his current playthrough of Pokemon Noir. Another thing you will need to know is where the Ivy Checker is. This guy will be both your best friend when you finally get that perfect Pokemon and your most hated enemy when one of your almost perfect Pokemon is missing just one RV that you needed. The Ivy Checker is located in Killard City within the Pokemon Center and you must pay particular attention to what he says. Any RV he mentions before saying stats like those they simply can't be beat are perfect stats. This is extremely important for selecting your breeding pairs and finding out when or if you get a perfect 5 RV Pokemon. Thanks must go to Shofu for providing you the screenshots of both the map and the RV checker with this most important phrase. Also, before you start breeding anything, get yourself a Fletchinder or Talonflame now. Game Freak has finally given us a Pokemon with Flame Body and the ability to use Fly all in one package. This Pokemon is the breeder's new best friend and mine has never left my party since I've gotten it. It is simply just too invaluable. For those of you who don't know, Flame Body reduces the amount of egg cycles required for hatching just by having it in your party, and trust me, you'll need it. If you can also get the hatching O power, then you can sh shorten this time even more. It's an amazing O power and definitely my favourite. You get it from having Max Style in Lumios City, and Mr. Bonding will give it to you within Cafe Introversion. I'll be showing two methods of breeding 5 RV Pokemon. The first method is assuming you are starting from scratch, and the second method is my preferred method that is used once you have a collection of good 5 RV males for each egg group. The first method is unfortunately the most time consuming method, but if you haven't gotten yourself a collection of good egg group Pokemon yet, then you're sadly out of luck, and everybody's got to start somewhere, and this is sadly the way it has to be done. You will need to head to a friend's safari and catch a few decent Pokemon. If the Pokemon you want to breed is in the safari, then you're in luck. You are even in more luck if you can get a D Ditto Friend Safari, but these unfortunately are quite rare, but not 100% required. If you can find a decent male Pokemon in the same egg group as your Pokemon, then you can use that in place of a Ditto. So let's say I want to breed Jolly Gibbles with 5 perfect RVs. I have a Gabout I caught in the Friend Safari, and the RV check has told me it has 31 attack and 31 speed. The other stats that I've written here are just random stats, stats for presentation reasons only, so just ignore them for the most part. I also happen to have a Jolly Ditto from the Friend Safari. It has 31 HP and special defense. By giving the Ditto an Everstone, I can guarantee the Jolly nature gets passed down to the baby, so I give the Gabout the Destiny Knot. I will hatch Gabout Gab Gibble babies until I get a Gibble that has 3 perfect RVs, and throw away any Gibbles that get 2 or less 31 RVs. So I get a 31 RV baby that has 31 HP, attack, and speed. Unfortunately, it didn't also get the 31 special defense from the Ditto, and it took the Gabout's horrible non special defense, but that's okay. We will get the stat from the next generation. Now I'll use that new baby in place of the Gibble, the Gabout, sorry, and I throw in a different Ditto, or male from the same egg group. I move the Everstone to the Gibble so I can guarantee the Jolly nature, as the Ditto I'm using has a different nature. 
You want a Pokemon that has a completely different max IVs to your current parent. As you can see, this Ditto has defense and special defense, both of which our current female parent does not have. The idea here is to generate another 3 IV male parent that has the missing IVs the, male, the mother doesn't have. So now we can keep throwing away any females we get, and any males that don't have 3 IVs. Eventually we'll get a new male with 31 HP, defense, and special def defense. This is great, so we can move on to the next step. Now we throw in the 3 IV male with the 3 IV female, having either parent hold the Everstone and the Destiny Knot. Since both parents share the 31 HP IV, there's an extremely high chance that the baby will be guaranteed to get 31 HP. The idea now is to get a new male or female that has 4 IVs. We keep generating babies, throwing away anything that's less than 3 IVs until we get a new 4 IV baby. This time it's a female and it has 31 HP, attack, defense and speed. So close, we are just missing special defense. We will now use this female as the mother for the next generation. We breed the 4 IV female with the 3 IV male, hoping to get a 4 IV male now that is, has the missing special defense. Again, throwing away anything with less than 3 IVs. We eventually get a 4 IV male with 31 HP, attack, defense, and special defense. And unfortunately, the Destiny Knot decided to inherit the special attack from the male, so we lost out on the speed. On to the next generation. Now, this is arguably the longest part of the process, breeding two 4 IV parents together until you get a 5 IV perfect. Anything that's 4 IV or less now is worthless, so keep grabbing eggs and hatching them until you finally get that glorious 5 IV baby. In this example, we finally get ourselves our perfect 5 IV baby, and it's a boy. Now, if you're only breeding for, your, for yourself, you can stop here. However, if you want to continue breeding, you can eventually get to the level where you can mass produce 5 IV Pokemon. And then you can trade them with other breeders for their 5 IV Pokemon and attain a large collection of 5 IV Pokemon. This is what I've done, and it all started with just simply gills that I'd bred. So you throw the perfect 5 IV male in with the 4 IV female, and keep going until you get a 5 IV female. You can keep any 5 IV males you get in the process for potential trades. Eventually you'll get a 5 IV of both genders, and then you've hit the sweet spot. When a 5 IV male and 5 IV female breed, you have a 1 in 6 chance of getting another 5 IV baby, which is amazing odds. Now I'll show you my preferred method. This method takes almost no time at all, and I will use a 100% real example that I just did yesterday. It took me about between 1 to 2 hours to complete this. It's also using probably one of the most annoying Pokemon to breed, Lucario. As not only does it have horrible female to male ratio, being 1 female to 7 males, it also has to be evolved before you can breed it, meaning this Pokemon is a nightmare to breed. However, with my method it was a walk in the park. I wanted to breed a timid 5 IV special attack Lucario. Lucario happens to be in the human luck and field egg groups, and I happen to have a 5 IV perfect timid natured male Alakazam that I traded a friend for. So I threw in my perfect Alakazam with the completely random female Lucario I happened to have, which only had a good speed IV, and the rest were garbage. I then attached the Destiny Knot to the Lucario and the Power Lens to the Alakazam. By attaching the Power Lens, I guarantee that the Alakazam will pass down its 31 special attack stat. As you can see, I've locked in the stat, so to speak. I keep breeding these two together until I get a new female to replace my current female. Unfortunately, this method of breeding means that all males, until you reach the final step, are garbage and useless and must be thrown away, which is pretty depressing if you think about it. I'm also looking, looking for a 3 max IV female or better, and I'm not going to waste my time with a 2 IV female because I'm using Destiny Knot plus the power item with a shared spe speed stat. This means that getting a 3 IV female is pretty easy, considering that one, at least one of the stats is guaranteed. So I'm look and thankfully I managed to get a female Riolu with 31 HP special attack and speed. I train the Riolu until it evolves because Riolu is an actual baby type Pokemon and thus it can't breed until it has evolved. So I evolve it and then I move on to the next step. I throw in the newly evolved female Lucario in with my Alakazam. I give the female Lucario the Destiny Knot again, but I replace the Alakazam's power lens with the power belt. This locks in the 31 defense IV. I keep breeding it together, looking for a 4 IV female and throwing away any males as before. I eventually get a female with 31 HP, defense, special attack and speed. I once again train this female up quickly so it'll evolve and then it's back to breeding. I put the new 4 IV female in with the Alakazam again, giving the Lucario the Destiny Knot again, and the Alakazam now holds the power band, which locks in the special defense. I'm now looking for a 5 IV perfect female Riolu. I get one eventually, and now I'm going to reach the final step. 
Once again, I train the Riolu so it'll evolve, and then it's back to breeding for the final step. I put the 5RV female Lucario with the Destiny Knot just like before, but now I swap out the Alakazam's power item with the Everstone. This will ensure that I get the nature I want for my Riolu babies. I've reached the normal 1 in 6 chance for another perfect. However, now they will also have the nature that I, that I wanted. And also, now I can finally keep any males that I get. This is great. And that's all there is to it. Breeding the Riolus was one of the easiest Pokemon I've bred to date, which is funny considering it would normally be a nightmare to, to breed this Pokemon due to the horrible gender ratio, and the fact that you can't breed Riolu straight out the box and you have to breed it up, and you have to train it up until it evolves. If you don't have 5 IV males in the same egg group with the right nature, then unfortunately you can't take advantage of the power items, and you have to use an Everstone for every step, but it's still easier than breeding from scratch. If you have to breed egg moves, then keep breeding them on until you get a female with the egg moves, and then just proceed as normal above. Since now that females can pass on egg moves, it's a lot easier to continue breeding on. If you're breeding for a Dream World ability, always use a different species male when available. I've no way to 100% confirm this, but from my experience, as of recording, I've hatched over 1,250 eggs in X alone. And here's what I've observed. When you throw in a male and a female, even if they both have the same ability, you have very bad odds to keep the ability you want. The game seems to pick the male or female 50-50 as the target for, who, gen, uh, for passing down the ability. If it picks the male, you have a 40% chance for it to keep its ability, and 60% chance to lose it. If it picks the female, however, you have a 60% chance to keep your ability, and 40% chance to lose it. So if we eliminate the need for a male parent with the same ability, and use a different, a different male with the same egg group, we have a 100% chance for it to, keep, to choose the female, and thus a 60% chance to keep our beloved Dream World abilities. This is all the knowledge I have to offer with regards to X and Y breeding. If I find something else out, I may add it in later, but this covers the basic. I hope you learned something new and enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching, and good luck, future Pokemon readers.